Hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's me again, Cube, and today we're going to talk about CP Process. Uh, CP Process is quite an interesting map, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to jump into the game for that real quick. So there we go. Uh, CP Process is really interesting and unique, or kind of unique, uh, because you have a big flank. You have the Suez area and the PC area to get onto second or the other way around. Um, and on you know classic maps like CP Badlands, you only have one flank area. You only have the resub, for example. You know you don't have two uh, ways to get around the enemy. So uh, yeah, that's why. Well, that's basically the reason uh, for process being quite unique in that uh, matter of fact. Okay. Um, as always, we're gonna start off with our aggressive mid hold. I'm gonna switch to the guide for that. There we go. Um, yeah, the scenario uh, is basically everyone is alive, you and the enemy, and uh, both teams have Reba. So you have your pocket on the stone, he can just watch the area around the medic, uh, he can spam the choke, he can even spam sewers from here. It's uh, just important that he's up on higher ground, so he can uh, just, you know, do a lot more of uh, soldier stuff. And you have a demo man close by as well, he can just, he's just uh, focused on the choke area, so no one can uh, run up the choke. You always want to uh, use this area to spam really effectively as the moment. Uh, on their flank, you have your soldier up on this crate and you and the scout helping him. Uh, if you don't have a buff, just sit up there, spam, spot. Uh, if you have a buff, you can even contest it, go into the uh, PC. You know, you can go with your scout, My, maybe you are able to pick off uh, the uh, enemy flank. And then you have your second scout just sitting up on the point and you're watching the sewers entrance. Um, it's uh, really important that your heavy classes, your demoman and, and your soldier, are watching into the choke because um, if you don't contest the sewers, you want to at least uh, have the information if the enemy runs into the sewers. So uh, always look into the choke, uh, just tell your team if someone is in the sewers and uh, yeah, you can try to pick them or you just can basically move your defense around that. Um, yeah, That's a pretty simple, straightforward hold. You know, the area you want to hold is really close and next to each other, so uh, you shouldn't really have a big problem uh, holding this. You know, even if someone is dead, you can just hold it the same way. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you one thing, because um, you might wonder why the medic is behind the stone, and uh, that is because it just adds versatility to your movement. So let me uh, run through the mid. So you just, you know, the enemy uh, soldier just tries to force your Uber, you know, coming through choke and you sit behind the stone. And if the soldier jumps in, your uh, pocket calls for you that the soldier jumps in, you can just move around the stone, you know. You can just trick the soldier because he doesn't see you behind the stone. He thinks you're behind the stone and then you just go around when he's jumping you. Or you can even go uh, onto the stone. If you jump from here, you can't do it as soldier, so I can't show you. But uh, just jump onto this point. And, uh, yeah. It just adds versatility to your medic movement, and um, it's much harder for the soldier to force you over. Okay, let me get back into the guide. Um, now we're going to talk about the defensive method. I'm going to switch the overlay real quick. Okay, so how do you hold the midpoint defensively? Um, I'm going to start off with the most important thing that your medic is close to the entrance of the PC. Uh, you don't want to, you basically don't want to sit uh, in your own choke, never. Just never sit in your own choke because it's so easy for uh, so easy for the enemy to uh, chase you through the choke. You know, the demo man can just bump ar across the map. Uh, the soldiers can skip jump through the map. Just sit close to house entrances as always. So you want to sit here and you have your pocket scout with you um, and it's really important. That's probably the most important thing about um, the defensive hold that your scouts always come with you because uh, I'm going to show you uh, after after I'm finished talking about the defensive hold why. Um, you have your soldiers uh, on high ground, you know, you don't have your pocket with your medic here, you have him a little bit closer so he can spam more effectively. Um, if he is not full HP, you might wanna uh, he might wanna come back and uh, get heals. But if he has full HP, he just sits here and he has a much better angle of spamming from this. And your Roma as well, he can spam the PC. Uh, 
the, your pocket can spam the sewers and the choke and the PC. You have your scout really close, so he can just spot people. His only job is just to tell the enemy, uh, your own team, where the enemy comes from. So you know, if you see the medic and choke, he, they might push choke or sewers, but they're not going to come from PC. So that's really big information for your heavy classes. Um, and uh, yeah, so don't die here. Just spot and go back. And your demo man doesn't really matter where he sits. Uh, he should just be comfortable uh, spamming all the entrances. Uh, he can sit close to the medic, but then he has uh, this crate in his way. So I like to position him here so he can uh, spam choke and PC. And uh, you always want to put up a sticky trap if you have the time for that. Um, I'm going to jump back into the game to tell you why it's really important uh, to have the scout with your medic. Let me switch. Okay, there we go. So you sit here as a medic, you know, you're just uh, healing your scout up here and waiting for the enemy to come in. And then uh, the enemy uber comes in. You, your soldiers uh, do a really good job. You're spamming the enemy and the, uh, the medic is forced to you uber and you just want to get out. You don't want to lose people, you want to get out. Your soldiers probably have to counter jump, you know, your Roma soldier jumps here. Your pocket soldier jumps uh, choke, for example. And then uh, suddenly you don't have someone with you and you have to run this entire way without healing someone. And uh, a scout might chase you or you don't get your uber in time. So that's why you always have your scout up here. And as soon as uh, the enemy comes in, uh, ubers or not, you know, it doesn't really matter. Just get your, uh, get your scout and run through this. You know, and you connect with your team in choke or on second. It's really, really important because I uh, it happened so many times to me that I just sit here and um, someone dies, your Roma dies, your so a pocket soldier is occupied, he can't help you and your scouts are somewhere else and then you have to run this entire way here and it's so frustrating if you die here. Like you're running for seven seconds and then you die here. It's so, it's goddamn awful. So you don't do that. Um, yeah. There's actually another way to hold uh, CP process mid defensively. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to switch to that hold. There we go. This is actually my favorite uh, way to hold it, but for some reason my team always uh, preferred the other way. And uh, as a medic, you might want to go with uh, the option uh, which is better for the heavy classes. So um, yeah, the basically the only difference uh, to the other hold is that your medic is in front of sewers. You have your scout close by again, so he can run out with you. Uh, you have your Roma or your pocket. This time you have your pocket uh, holding the PC uh, the other way around, basically, and your Roma is holding the sewers. You have your scout. You know, the scout can sit here and help here. The scout can even go up onto the stone and spot more aggressively. It um, depends on your play style. Just uh, as a scout and a defensive hold, you always want to spot people. You're gonna, you want to make use of your uh, insane movement speed. So it's it might be better just to sit on the stone every time. And uh, the way I like uh, the reason uh, that I like this hold more is that you're. I'm gonna jump back into the game for that. Okay, uh, you're gonna hold here as a medic. You hear your scout up here, and uh, if you wanna get out, you know you force the enemy to uh, enemy team. You get out, and then you just re uh, you connect with your team here, and it's so much. It's just faster than the uh, PC hold. You just run up this and connect here. You need, your scout doesn't even have to come with you, you know. If your pocket soldier jumps here, you can just run this like three seconds and then uh, heal your soldier again. It's just more efficient in the way of uh, reconnecting with your team. So you might want to do that. But everyone has to be on the same page for that. So uh, you might, you know, want to decide the... You wa might want to decide one hold and don't... Uh, what's the word? You don't want to mix them up all the time because uh, it's really important that your scout is with, uh, is with you in a defensive hold. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And if if your heavy classes don't have a problem uh, with holding this way, just do it this way because I think as a medic that this is the better way to do it. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna talk about. 
the second point now, as always. Let me open the second. Um, here we go. Oops. There we go. Um, yeah, how do you do this? Uh, your medic is just sitting on the point, you know, he's on the high ground, really important, but he's far back. And then you have your soldier on the fence. It's really basic positioning, you know, on the high ground, pushing the cho uh, spamming the choke, spamming the sewers. You can you can even spam the PC? It's like the god tier position for a soldier, I think, uh, because the fence, you know, it doesn't even give you the opportunity to splash someone if if you get jumped. It's just really good. Uh, you have your demo man close by doing uh, the exact same thing. He can even sit on the high ground. He can run down here. You don't want to run into this green area, you know, on the grass, because it's just too close and too easy for the enemy to, uh, yeah, to just kill you or go close to you. So you want to sit on the high ground. Uh, from this, you can spam more effectively into choke. If you sit up on the point, you're much harder to hit, but you don't have the uh, great, you don't have a great spam angle. You have your scout, as always, in the front spotting for you. You can spot the medic and choke. You can spot someone uh, going through this entrance from the sewers. And then you have your second scout just watching the lower part of... Uh, PC. So you have two classes covering PC, you have one, maybe two classes covering the sewers and one the choke. And you make use of your high ground. You know, you don't want to run down here if you don't uh, have to. Just make the enemy come to you, use the high ground, you are as late as possible. It's a pretty great hold. It's pretty tough for the enemy to get in. Um, now we're going to talk about Defensive holds. Gonna open that. Okay. This is a defensive hold. Your enemy team, the enemy team has Uber. You don't. How do you hold it? Um, again, you have your scout close by. His only uh, job is to spot people in choke or in sewers. So if you see the medic, you to tell your team. You have your pocket uh, holding the exact same spot. Just uh, be ready to spam because it's just such a good spot, you know, always use that fence to your to your advantage if you can. Uh, you have your scout up on the bridge this time, you know, make use of higher ground, just spotting people in PC and then you have your Roma sitting up uh, on this. So basically no one can come through the PC without Ubering, it's just a really good spot. Um, you might see the enemy really late this way, but at least you're holding it more efficiently. So if they come here, you have a better spam angle. Um, but sometimes you don't get the uh, the good information. But I think it's it's okay. And then you have your demo man sitting on the high ground so he can spam pipes over here. He has his sticky traps up. And uh, yeah, the enemy team ubers and you just run out through uh, this entrance. It's, it's basically called one because there's so many entrances to the last. I think we call it one. Um, just go through the shutter door and uh, you're basically safe. Go with your demo man this time. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I have another one. Da -da. Mm, yeah, like, let me find it. There it is. Okay, what is this hold? It, this looks quite uh, exotic, because sometimes um, you're, you know, you kept the second point, you kept the spire. The enemy is on last, but you lost some people. The enemy team has Uber, and you don't, and they, you know, they're gonna uh, push out. How do you hold it? We will. I think I don't. I haven't covered this in the videos before, but on process, uh, process, it's really important because it's relatively easy for the enemy to go onto second. Uh, on maps like Bad Dance, it's much harder. Um, but yeah, how do you hold it? You have your medic, and this is the most most important thing again, uh, is that your medic is close to the PC and not in the choke. Because in the cho uh, in the choke, you first of all you have lower ground. You don't want that and they can chase you. You know, there's an it's an open area, the soldiers can just jump through, the demo man can jump. Uh, if you go into the PC, you're safe. You know, in heavy classes can't chase you this way. You have your pocket up here, so he can spam this entrance and he can even spam the lower. Um, you have your scout really aggressively holding the lobby so he can give your team information if the medic comes through lobby. You have your Roma holding the balcony, you have your scout holding the uh, shutter door and it's all about the information you know you want to spot the medic 
So you can tell your team where the combo comes uh, from. You can just spam that entrance really hard. And uh, if they uber, you just get out. You know, make it hard for the enemy and get out. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about the last. Here we go. Um, how do you hold the last point? There's two ways of holding it. This is the more aggressive way where you have the medic uh, on low ground. You know, you go close. This uh, Basically this picture is not really accurate, uh, but I couldn't find another uh, one from above. So we have to go with this one. You have your medic behind this wall, healing your soldier and your demo man, and you're just holding um, this entrance, the one entrance, and the rollout entrance, the the entrance where you run through when you're rollouting is called uh, rollout. So you're holding rollout in one, <coughs> and then you have your scouts uh, holding uh, the two and three, basically just the middle entrances here, and your soldier behind uh, holding the last entrance on this side you can't really see on this picture. So um, the idea of this hold is basically that you deny the enemy on this side really hard, so they can't come in without Ubering. And uh, the other side is quite weak because you only have one scout and one uh, Roma holding it. So sometimes the enemy just gets in. So you don't want to die there. You want to hold this really passively because it's pretty easy for the enemy to get into lobby and then push on the right side. So you want to just spot the enemy, you know, your scout spots. You have your soldier behind and you're just spamming. You know, you make it really hard for the medic just to run in without Ubering. Um, uh, as I said, this this way of holding it is really weak, so you might want to switch to sniper and sit and spawn. So you can always, uh, you know, the enemy has a fear of dropping the uber if they uh, go in slowly through uh, this side. So sniper might be even better than scout on this. This is probably one of the maps where sniper is like better than scout on a default hold. So uh, yeah, this is better for information, and the sniper is better for holding. Because you always can, uh, you know, you sit in the uh, in the uh, resub and you just spawn as a scout if the enemy uh, ubers. So as soon as they uber, you just go scout or heavy or pyro or I don't know, just uh, you know everything else but sniper. So yeah, uh, and you always want to have steeds on the point. Uh, we covered this in the videos before. Uh, there's some maps where you want to have uh, stiggies on the last, and sometimes uh, some maps where you don't want stiggies on the last. This is a map where you want stiggies uh, because it actually caps quite slowly, but um, sometimes you can just play really defensively as uh, the defensive team because the enemy, you know, if they don't get kills, you know, they they are forced to do anything, so they just run up onto the point they can't really go behind you or anything you know you just you just go back you let you know they're ubering you just chill you, you take a, a chill pill you go back into the spawn and uh, the enemy might want to uh, jump on the point and then you have sticks there so they have to clear that and this gives you time for your soul just to get onto the point and yeah just don't hold it too aggressively you know the way of holding a uh, process is just uh, basically uh, just holding it defensively. Okay, I have another hold prepared. Let me open that. This hold, um, I'm a big fan of that hold, but we didn't really do it too often. Um, you want to do this if you have a disadvantage. For example, you have like 70% uber and the enemy team has 100%. So you know the enemy comes in and uh, they want to either get to the point or to the medic. So you sit up here, you're really safe. You know, if the enemy comes from this side, you just rotate to the other side. If they come, if they come from the right side, you just rotate to the left side. You know, they can't really kill you uh, anytime soon. And your soldiers are with you, so your soldiers have always buff. Your demo man is close to the res uh, resub area because you don't really get heals from your medic up here. So you always want to be able to get into spawn. You want to have sticks on the point, as always. And then you have your scouts uh, sitting on the point, just spotting people. Just be annoying. And uh, if you take a little bit of damage, just go back into the spawn and come back out again. And uh, if the enemy really commits to the point, you know, they clear the stiggies, the scouts have to go back because they're weak, then you ha need to have uh, one soldier jumping the point. Just, you know, block it. Maybe your pocket first or the guy with more heals and then you uh, connect with your other soldier as a medic and uh, you 
build you über or are you just uh, get them ready for jumping in but uh, yeah the soldiers really have to do the work here so just wait if the enemy doesn't do anything you don't have to do anything either you just wait basically because you have high ground um, and uh, yeah you have great positioning basically I mean if you just see this you know you're it's basically a circle around the point or may, maybe like a diamond or something I don't know it's it's a really uh, it's really good positioning you have everything covered you're really defensively uh, you can just use your you always want to use a uh, resub because the uh, fucking health thingy where you get your ammo and health is really close you don't have to run really far just get in as a scout get out again and uh, yeah your soldiers basically have to do the heavy work to block the point for example okay um, yeah I think that's everything in terms of holds let me jump back into the game and we're gonna talk about some pushes okay so yeah how do you push the last the key to last is always the lobby so you don't want to just run in like a moron from the left side you always want to get control of the lobby so you as your medic and your pocket you come in through this you know you check for stiggies always check for stiggies as a pocket and uh, you take control of this you have one soldier here you have like one soldier here uh, it's really important that one scout uh, always holds outside so you uh, see if someone you know runs uh, behind you but the rest of the team basically sits in lobby and from here you have uh, different options you know as I told you before you can just go from right side so what you want to do is you just go in from right side and first of all you try to pick off someone uh, who's holding it too closely and yeah you just run in you don't uber that's really important you don't uber you just go in and make the enemy uncomfortable so you go in you might go up here you know you take control of the last point and uh, you basically confuse the enemy that they do anything yeah that's that's the point of the right side push and uh, of course you can like go from lobby left side you can okay we might have to uh, wait a little bit because the map is restarting Yeah, I should really fix that for the next card. Okay, 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 come on. Let me play, please. My god, why is this? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, we covered the right side push. Um, the w one alive, lock the door. I really liked uh, pushing this way. You come through the lobby and you go with your soldiers left side. Um, you need Uber for that, but yeah, if you have Uber, you can do it. You just go in from here and you, both of your soldiers jump in. And if the medic is too close, you just jump the medic. Um, if you if the demo man is too close, you jump the demo man. You basically uh, try to surprise the enemy by uh, jumping into people. And yeah, it's, I I just like this push. You know, you get you cover uh, a big distance. You can re-push after that. You know, you might want to just uh, force the enemy medic get out again and re-push from the right side, non-uber versus non-uber. Or you can just uh, if you don't see stiggies on the point, you just jump on the point as a soldier and they are forced to run to you. This is uh, I think the most balanced way of pushing uh, into last you can also you know you jump your soldiers here and your demo man is just sitting here uh, sticking the point like sitting really far back because you want to uber the soldiers first uh, your scouts can come in through all the entrances you you know you play it wide openly you just come from every side possible and they can't really focus everyone you know they have to it's really confusing for the enemy if you come from all the entrances um, yeah, I think that's a g great way of pushing last, but in general it's really hard to push last because the enemy can just sit back and wait for you to go into the point. So uh, you can always go with like a suicide and then switch to sniper, switch to spy. Sniper is really effective on this map because you can like uh, snipe from here, you can snipe from far right and there's nothing really in your way. So if the medic isn't sitting behind, you know, he's hiding top in secret or he's hiding around that wall. Uh, you might get a good shot on him. Can even uh, like even sit behind the stairs, you know, shoot like this, even shoot up there. Yeah, great way of holding it. Okay, so uh, let's talk about second. I'm going to talk about pushing the 
process second point here. So how do you do that? I think the best way of pushing onto second is if you, you know, you cover this entire area. How do you do that? You have your soldier in here. So usually the enemy sits up here. There are like four people at least on the point. So uh, they're not close. So you can use that fact that they're not clo uh, holding close. So you don't uber here, you know, you just your pocket soldier. As a first, before you push, I have to say it, you have to con get control of this. So if no one is in there, that's really good for you. And then your pocket soldier just jumps through. You know, he jumps here. This might look really weird, but um, the reason behind that is that, uh, you know, you distract the enemy. They can't only focus on the choke anymore. They have to look at this guy. And when the soldier jumps through, he can even tell if there are sticky traps here, sticky traps there, sticky traps there. And uh, after he cleared that, you know, he's jumping in with 300 HP, so he won't really die anytime soon. Uh, your scouts can come in through this. And suddenly you have like two guys or three guys sitting here. And the rest of your team is sitting there. So it's really tough for the enemy, you know. they. They want to focus the medic, but they always they also want to focus the flank because they don't have fields. And suddenly, uh, you can just run in. You know, they have to spread their spam. You just run in and you uber uh, as late as possible. You just uber close to the point. So uh, if you know that the enemy is holding far back, like even if the enemy is holding from the sniper deck for some reason, uh, you just go in and you don't uber at all. You just take control of the spire slowly. Um, I think this is by far the best way of pushing second. Uh, of course you can always run through PC. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, only if you have an advantage you might want to do that because it's, you know, you kept the middle and then you go through PC. It's just faster to get onto the point this way and you might uh, catch out a guy. So if you have a uh, uber advantage you might want to do that. But um, if you don't have an advantage uh, you probably want to go with like a sewers or a choke push. Okay, uh, we covered last, we covered second. Um, I'm not really talk about how you push the middle from the second because I think it's really intuitive. You know, you have the choke area, you have the sewers and you have the PC. So you want to basically use all the entrances. So don't go in with like six people through choke because you, first of all, you have to cover all the entrances because they might uh, back up you. You know, you can't just go in with six people through choke because they back up you and the second caps faster than the middle. So you always want to uh, check PC for hiders and check sewers for hiders. And then, yeah, if you uh, have control of PC and sewers, you're in a really good spot because you can, you know, you make the map open, you come from all the sides possible and uh, the enemy can't focus. They have to spread again. That's really good. And uh, yeah, you know, if the enemy is close, you might want to uber in. If the enemy is far back, don't uber at all. Just try to uh, spam the, just try to spam everything you see and uh, get high ground with your soldiers. Okay, and uh, as I told you before, the flank is really important on this map because you can uh, get, you know, you can just run behind enemy lines really easily. So if you have a big disadvantage, for example, and you're holding the middle, you can uh, also just have three classes, you know, up close PC and uh, the enemy comes through choke and you just push the PC with three guys. And usually uh, the enemy team won't uh, push the PC with like three guys or more, you know, they just have one guy here because they all also have to, uh, have to cover the sewers and you just, you know, you run aggressively into the enemy, even if the enemy uh, ubers in choke, you just run in here, get a pick and the enemy is forced to go back. So make use of the flanks. Like you can't really do that on Badlands, you know, because they can just like have one guy there spotting, but here they always have to cover two sides. So make use of that if you're holding uh, backups. Uh, or soldiers just uh, holding close corner is really important, I think. You can make big plays as a scout on this map just by running behind the enemy. Yeah, and then you have your mid fights. Let's cover mid fights. You have your uh, demo man rollouts. You know, there's like so many rollouts. Some uh, demo mans prefer, prefer to go slowly, you know, just running with a medic. I don't really like that, but you know, if you don't know the rollout, you might. You don't have any other choice, and you come in uh, with your soldiers. You know you're you're healing your soldier, and your soldier should you know if you are Roma on this map, always learn the faster road where you jump here, jump here, and you know you basically do this. 
uh, yeah, I'm not really into the game, so I can't really do it anymore. But you can jump up to this um, health pack. You uh, that's really uh, really good if you can do that because you can deny it for the enemy demo man. Um, and if you are the demo man, you know you're coming in through choke. You're spamming the health pack. You're spamming high ground for the soldiers. Uh, that's your job. And I think the most important jobs on this map, uh, on this map, uh, the most important thing on this map is that your soldiers get onto high ground. So you know you get up. Sometimes your pocket can jump up to the stone, or your scout can sit up there, and then you contest high ground. And I just you know by playing it like hundreds of times, I think it's much better if you're the second team to go onto the high ground. You know you're counter jumping the enemy. So. You know, you might have an uh, inexperienced team as your opponent, and what, should, uh, and what they do is they just rush the high ground. You know, they, they think that it's really good to have the high ground, so they just go up there. So what you can do is just you s see them going up there, and then you counter jump them. You just see two soldiers and a scout up there, your demo man uh, can spam them, and you just counter jump them with your soldiers, and it's much easier. You know, if they don't hit the air shot, for example, uh, it's much easier for the counter jumping soldier. You know, uh, really old MGE tactic, just counter jumping the guys to fuck them up. That's uh, I, You don't really see that too often in uh, lower level competitive TF2, but in you know on prem level or on high level, you uh, people do that actually. They just fuck you up with counter jumps and yeah. You know, you, you, you the enemy is up here and he spots the guy down here. So what he does is he shoots the rocket up here. And as this guy, you just see the guy, you see the rocket coming and you just jump. So the rocket won't hit you, the, uh, you don't take damage, and this guy basically wasted a rocket. That's why counter jumping is so valuable. You can use that on any map, by the way. Uh, I think it's just really important on CP process. Okay. Yeah, and, um, your scouts, you know, you can, if you want to basically hold everything. Your medic should decide where he wants to go, if he go wants to go, if he wants to commit on left side. Or if he wants to commit on right side, so you basically go left or right and heal the guys on uh, the very particular side. And uh, yeah, sometimes you don't have someone watching right side, so your a scout can sneak through. Sometimes someone just runs through the middle because no one is watching that for some reason, or to the left side. So if you see a gap, just use it. You know, just get behind the many, uh, enemy because if you're if you're behind the enemy, oh, stupid counter. I really need to fix this. Okay, overtime. I just need to... my bad. Um, okay, so uh, if you get behind the enemy into the PC, it's really great because first of all you have the health pack here. You can just take the health pack and get behind them. And uh, if they don't see you, they might they might uh, think that you come through choke, you know, it, that you actually do the big flank. But uh, you don't have to do that. You can just wait in PC for a few seconds and come out, uh, come out again through PC. And uh, you can do the same thing on sewers, you just run in there, if you're low you take the health back obviously, if you don't you just sit next to the gate, you know, you wait for the enemy to go defensively and then you go back onto the middle. So as always make use of the flank, make use of PC and make use of sewers. It's a really great uh, technique on this, because you're in, your medic can only heal one guy and you want to... Uh, take the health packs. There's not too many maps where you have uh, control of two uh, medium health packs and even the small one uh, and process is one of them so you want to make use of that. Yeah, I think I talked way too much. My mouth is getting really uh, dry right now so uh, I'm just gonna stop the video here. Um, okay, yeah, as always you can follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. I'm streaming there daily now basically and if you have any questions just post them in the comments and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See ya!